Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com and today I want to introduce you to our fancy new friend here. We've been calling it Resolve 2.0, but it probably needs a better name than that. So sound off in the comments with what you think the name should be. Anyways, this is the brand new Brulin Care 5128 headphone measurement rig. And in today's video, we're gonna go over some observations. Let's check it out. So for those of you totally new to all of this and anyone wondering what the hell even is this thing, it's a head. <laughs> this is the latest and greatest, most advanced and extremely expensive headphone measurement test system. The system from Brule and Care that literally set the new standard for headphone measurements. Now we've already done a few videos on this system and what it means to move over to it from the Gross here, which are linked in the description. But I wanna also give you guys an overview of the rig and give a bit of context. First, we're not the only ones who are using the BNK5128 system. We are actually joined in moving to the new headphone measurement standard by a number of well-established review platforms, including our friends over at Linus Tech Tips, the folks over at SoundGuys, Jude over at HeadFi, and of course the one and only Critical, just with the 4620 ear only version of this system. You may have seen his video where he uses effectively just the ear piece of it. So the bottom line there is that measurements done from each of these platforms will be compatible in raw form. And for those who adopt our headphone reference curve methodology, they will be compatible even in compensated form. Now you might be wondering, why are all of us moving to this new system? The short answer is that the b 5128 is simply better at low and high frequencies, specifically below 200 Hertz and above 10K. Now that's not to say this older Gross system is bad. It's just that this is better, at least better if we care about having a more human-like acoustic impedance to the ear simulation, which we do. That's basically the gist of it. So I've been measuring headphones with this for a little bit now, and there are a number of things that I've observed over the course of using it, and in particular, comparing it to the older Gross system here. And I wanted to point out a couple of key differences. Um, the first is that the Gross here is literally a plate. It's an ear on a plate. This is effectively two 43 AGs mounted on an upright fixture to emulate a 45 CA. The 5128 right here is instead a full mannequin head with contours to the side of the head or face or where the face would be. <laughs> now, importantly, it also has soft tissue to the entire side of the, of the face. And whether that's gonna make a difference, we'll, we'll find out. But I do find that that's a fairly significant difference. Like if you push in on this, you can actually feel that this is soft tissue that's, I guess, a little bit more squishy, similar to what you get like on the side of an actual human face compared to the, you know, the hard plate feel here. Now we know that headphones behave differently on different heads. And one of the common areas to see this difference is in the base. And when we announced that we were moving to this new system, the issue of leakage came up a number of times, particularly that you're more likely to get a seal on the flat plate than you are on a mannequin head. Now, in my testing so far with the 5128, this has not really been an issue. It technically is more challenging to get a seal with certain headphones, especially with an initial seating. But what I found so far is that you just have to be a little bit more careful with the seating and with the positioning on the rig. And then you do find that there is a seal. Um, so it's, it's just that there are more positions that are not representative with these mannequin heads. You know, when we wear headphones, we can generally tell if something is wrong with the positioning or the seal subjectively, you know, whether it's because of, you know, something touching our ears in weird ways we know right away, or you can pretty easily tell if like an IEM isn't sealing well in your ear canal. Um, but imagine trying to do that for somebody else, right? Because you don't have that subjective, you know, internal feedback, it's, it's a lot harder to do. And the same is true for trying to position headphones on this, you know, these types of heads. And I think you kind of have to imagine what it would be like to try and place a headphone correctly on somebody else. Um, and yeah, you're probably not gonna get it right the first time. And the same is true for in-ear headphones, where, you know, there were some initial reports about there being a difficulty in getting a seal for the bass response. And that that's true. It is more difficult to get a seal because we're actually using a pinna rather than like the cylindrical piece, you know, something like that. Um, and the reason for that is because we want to also make use of the acoustic impedance, you know, the actual shape of the ear canal, which is more human-like on these, 
And what I found is that the same thing is true where you just have to be a little bit more meticulous and careful with the positioning of the in-ear headphone in the ear to ensure that there's a seal. Now, I do have a couple of other observations as well. One of them is that for certain headphones, there actually seems to be quite a bit more information that you get from doing measurements on this system compared to the Gross. There's stuff that's just completely omitted on the Gross that shows up perfectly fine on the B&K. Additionally, there seems to be a fairly consistent feature of the B&K 5128, uh, right at around eight kilohertz, showing slightly more energy here uh, on a regular basis uh, than what we have for the reference point. And that might be to do with the reference point um, and, and where the data for that comes from. Uh, but it might also be that this is a feature not unlike what happens with the Gross at around 9K. You may know about this if you're familiar with the Gross systems and how they measure. Uh, there is a particularly unique interaction that happens with this pinna, something that we've commonly referred to as the pinna notch or canal entrance resonance. And this is just something to keep an eye on to see how headphones behave on this one and to you know check that region subjectively. Like I know a lot of people are gonna be doing EQ when they see measurements of this relative to a target. And that's an area where you still want to be a little bit careful, I think. Now, I wanted to also show you guys how a number of well-known headphones measure on the 5128, and so I'm going to show that now. But I also think there are a few takeaways to note so far. So as you guys are looking at this, let me go through those. First, we need to keep in mind that we're dealing with a reference curve now that's not smoothed, unlike the Harman target, which is smoothed to one half octave. And this means we're bound to see a lot more fine grain information showing up, and we'll see if this is something that we learn things from. That, there's, the jury's still out on you know how much that matters, but I do think that that's interesting to note. The second takeaway is that while we get more information here, we shouldn't be overly concerned with the minutia of the fine grain deviations that we might see. And I probably need to do another video on why that's the case, but in short, the positional variation and head-related transfer function differences are going to be real for anybody who's listening to the headphones that we measure on this. The third takeaway is that headphones that measured well before on the Gross system here also tend to measure reasonably well on the new system, barring a few exceptions. But you know, it's not like it's not like suddenly headphones that were good before are now bad or anything like that. We just still have to kind of retrain ourselves when it comes to reading these new measurements, uh, you know, done on the 5128. And lastly, even though this is the latest and greatest measurement rig, there is still more to sound quality for individual listeners than just, you know, adherence to or deviation from a target. That is like a key thing that everybody sort of needs to know when they're reading graphs and think it must match perfectly. And that's not really what this stuff is meant to show. And it's in part because of what we've mentioned many times now, and it's that headphones behave differently depending on the head that's wearing them. And in some cases, this difference is significant. Like we found some results where the difference was substantial. <laughs> So you still won't always be able to predict how something's going to sound to you just based on looking at a graph. You can get a general indication and a general idea and the same sort of caveats that existed with the previous measurement systems there, you know, they still apply to this system as they apply to any headphone measurement. Um, you know, even if these graphs are now on a more advanced measurement system, there's still more to how this is going to sound to you than what you see here on the graph. Now, one thing before I let you guys go, I've linked in the description a forum thread that contains EQ profiles for a number of different headphones. What we have with our reference point is a very solid theoretical foundation, but we need more input from actual people listening to this to see how it actually sounds to you. So give this a shot, let us know how it sounds. We can't control for unit variation or pad wear, which are bound to cause some issues for folks. Uh, but we still want to get some indication, uh, you know, of how people hear the the reference point. Um, and we want to get some feedback on that. You know, if you have Sennheiser headphones that have really worn pads, for example, also please indicate that in your report. But either way, let us know what you think uh, on our forum or on our Discord, also linked in the, in the description below. Uh, we'll eventually be compiling the feedback and including it with our own sort of internal testing. This will ideally help inform, you know, what we do moving forward uh, with this target. Uh, but anyways, that does it for this video. I'm gonna let you guys go and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.